What we're going to talk about is the database class. Now, I've landed on the CodeIgniter database documentation, as you can see at the URL at the top. If you look on Google for just CodeIgniter database, it'll most likely bring you to this page. And what we have here are quite a few options. Most of them you're not going to use, at least in this series. You're pretty much going to be looking at the active record class right here. So the active record makes your life a lot easier than having to write SQL queries. And I'm not opposed to writing them, but this is actually, I found it very, very useful. Uh, this has select, insert, update, delete abilities, and all those other things like order by and the typical MySQL stuff you'll need. So the first thing we need to do is first make sure we have our database configured. So I'll open up NetBeans and in your application config folder, the first thing we go to is database.php. And I'll scroll all the way to the bottom. And we just need to insert our settings in here. So I'm connecting to the local host. My username is root. And from our past video, our database name was junior dash. And that's all you have to do to have your settings set. But we, what we need to do is load the database. And we have two options to do that. We could load it manually every time, or we could have it auto load. Now, I prefer to have it auto loaded because this is going to be a database rich application. So, in our auto load PHP, our libraries, you see they have examples up here as well. We're going to load database. Okay. Now, once you do that, you should go to your project page and refresh the page. And if you don't get any errors, it means it successfully connected to the database. Because when you auto load it, it auto loads with your default settings. Next, let's go to our controllers. And first, I'm going to get rid of this welcome file. We're not even using this. Let's go to our home controller. And let's just create a test method. So I'll say public function test. And Normally, without the auto loader, you would say this load library database. Uh, but strangely enough, it is this load database, like that. And when you do that, you have this available, this DB. That's if you load it manually. Um, but I can get rid of that because we're auto loading it. So we have this database available, it's just this DB. So I could say this DB get user. Okay, we'll start with something simple. I'll just say Q equals that and print R of Q result. Okay, and let's go and hit our test home slash test. And it says undefined property result. I had to make that a function. I forget that all the time. There we go. And it's an empty array. Okay. So briefly, I'm just going to open up my database. And in the user, I'm just going to put in some junk data. Okay, and I'll refresh. And now we have all this stuff here. So let's go back. Now, the way this active record work, works is a little bit different than you might suspect. If I wanted to do a where statement, there's two ways I can do it. The first one is this way. I can say get underscore where. And in here, I can pass in either a string or an array. I prefer to do an array, so I could say user ID of one. And if I go back to refresh the page, here's user ID one, as you can see right here. The other way, you actually pass the parameters from the top. So I'd say this DB where, whoops, and I'll just say user ID is two and make sure it works. There we go, user ID of two. So what we've done is it's actually building out a query 
but it's sometimes it's hard because we're building the query in a different direction we're used to because in MySQL where is usually near the end um, additionally you can do order by user ID descending and again you're used to that being at the bottom so it's kinda like you're preparing your query string and it's not in any particular order it'll just build it right so I'll refresh and since we did a descending we start with user ID 3 and that good stuff so let's go ahead and open the docs again and take a look at some things we looked at this DB get and it does load select from my table uh, we we'll go down a little bit ways this DB get where we check that one out uh, they also have a DB select which we can put above uh, our query and let's go ahead and do that so in our file I'll say this DB select and I'll select the user ID and the login okay and if you're used to typing out MySQL queries this would be select user ID login from user and order by user ID descending this is what your actual query would look like and you can say wow this is in a different order so that's probably the main thing that's going to throw you off that you'll have to get used to um, so I'll go ahead and delete that so let's see what happens when we run just selecting these two fields from our previous query we had all this and now we can just select the user ID and the login and uh, it's pretty easy to do so let's go back to the docs and if we scroll down a ways we have some things like min and max and average uh, these are things we're not really going to jump into um, they also have the from uh, where you don't have to pass in the parameter in get so what that would say is this db from user so now it looks a little bit more ordered but it's not necessary to do it this way so it's select from user order by and then get would get all of this okay um, and after you call this you'd be perfectly fine to do a new query here because it, it would just get rid of all this data that happened once you fetch it or do something with it uh, or insert it no need to worry about that um, back to this they have joins which we'll eventually use the where we just looked at that already and a ways down or where where and there's a bunch of conditions so you don't have to type out your queries the page is pretty long we're not going to cover everything here but you you should be able to get the idea of it um, again with inserting data it's kind of the same thing it's incredibly easy uh, we'll do an insert real quick so I'll just make a new one I'll say this DB insert data and I want to insert into the user table let's say heck we don't even have to pre-fill an array we'll just write it in here and I'll say um, login equals Jenkins like that and if we refresh the page and look at our database we have Jenkins super super easy to insert data uh, update is also pretty much the same thing if we go to the update area um, I'll go back update we just have to pass in a where statement so just like that insert statement we can do an update we just pass a where so let's go ahead and do that I would say this DB update and whatever you want to update it with I'm gonna change the login to Sammy and I need to set the where statement otherwise it's gonna update every record so this DB where um, user ID equals 4 okay and let me make sure I have 4 4 was Jenkins which we just created and I'll refresh the page 
we'll look at this refresh and there it is Sammy and it's pretty much the same thing for deleting I'll show you that also to delete we just say delete from my table and the where statement is built in right into it otherwise we can do it this way as well um, so let's go ahead and do that so here's my where statement I'll say this DB delete from user okay now this is a dangerous way to do it because it looks like it's deleting everything from user if this were ever to get commented out it would delete every user but I'll show you anyway so I'll refresh go to here and refresh Sammy is gone they also allow you to just pop this guy on the end like so and let's delete user ID 3 refresh and back here let's refresh and there it is let me make sure to comment out this code okay and let's hit up the docs once more um, they have method chaining here this is optional I really don't do this very often if at all but you can optionally build out your query like this rather than ending them on a new line and basically that in action is kind of like this so you don't have to type this DB out every time okay it would look like this but we could make it look a little more readable on one line like this let's tab it over a little ways there we go this is method chaining so I'll refresh and I still get my objects there so that's the the general stuff we're gonna need for our models and I was demonstrating this in the controller this code should be in the models and we're gonna get to that but this was kind of a run through of the uh, database class and I'm gonna comment all this out so that we never look on it again and uh, that'll wrap up this video.